Good morning students. In this video, we will discuss about different types of keys possible in DBMS. We usually we will find these five types of keys in the DBMS. One is the candidate key, super key, primary key, secondary key or sometimes people will call it as an alternative key also. And at last we have the foreign key to have a relationship between the two tables. Okay, so in this video, I will just elaborate more about the candidate key and super key. So please look, we will look at it, the candidate key. The candidate key is the minimum number of attributes which can uniquely identify a tuple in a relation. That we can call it as a candidate key. Let me repeat again. It is useful, the candidate key is useful to identify a tuple, okay, in a relation R. Suppose let's say that we have a class. In the class, if I want to identify any person, okay, if I want to identify any person, I have to either know his role number or the name. If I know his name, suppose if I say Rakesh, in a class more than one Rakesh may be possible, so I cannot uniquely identify a student by using his name. So let's say that some people will identify using the dress color, okay, maybe that university or the college have the uniform. Uh, common uniform then we cannot uniquely identify because everyone will wear the same dress so what is the we will have a roll number so if i see the roll number each student will have a unique roll number so using the student roll number we can identify any student uniquely so what we can say that the minimum set of attributes which can uniquely identify a tuple in relation is called as a candidate key so in that example roll number is the candidate key okay now you can ask me sir for a relation only one candidate key is possible no we can have more than one candidate key is also possible let me give you an example for where the more number of candidate keys are possible in a relation we let's say that we have the car details okay now if you see if i enter the car details in an apartment let's take that now using the car vehicle registration number i can uniquely identify a car because each car has the unique registration number and each car there is a chases number so using chases number also we can uniquely identify the car if you go to the showroom they will not uniquely identify the car based on the registration number they will enter your car chases number because no one can change your car chases number okay so they will uniquely identify using the chases number and we have the engine number also for engine we have a engine number so i can uniquely identify a car by using its registration number or by its engine number or by its chases number okay so in that case we have three candidate keys okay is it clear are you able to understand so that is what i want to say about the candidate key now we will talk about the super key the super key is also a set of attributes if you see that here i am saying minimum set of attributes here i am saying it is the set of attributes which can uniquely identify a tuple is called known as a super key okay it is the set of attributes which can uniquely identify a tuple in relation is called as the super key now let me discuss these points so that you will understand the difference between a candidate key and a super key I think some people would have understand the difference with the definition itself because the candidate key is the minimum set of attributes whereas super key is the set of attributes is it clear okay adding zero or more attributes to the candidate key generates a super key okay let me elaborate this point if I can identify using the roll number a person uniquely a person means the student if I know his roll number and his name, can I uniquely identify a person? Yes, I can do it. Suppose if I say roll number one, Ravi, I, only one person will stand. If I say Ravi alone, more than one person can answer your query. Whereas if you say roll number and name, only one person will answer your query or will respond to back to you. So in that case, the roll number comma name will combinedly call will call it as a super key so that's what i am telling uh, the roll number is a candidate key for the roll number i am adding another attribute now it become as a super key okay a candidate key is a super key yeah because 
if you are adding zero, meaning is that for candidate key, if you are adding zero attributes, it is becoming a super key. So a candidate key is a super key, but vice versa is not possible because a super key cannot be a candidate key. Is it clear? Minimum of the super key will become as a candidate key. Okay. Super set of candidate key will act as a super key. Okay. I hope with these examples, you would have understood what is a candidate key and what is a super key. Now let me discuss what is a primary key. Now let's take that you have a set of candidate keys for a relation R you have set of candidate keys. Let's take that attribute 1 is a one candidate key, attribute 2 is another candidate key, attribute 3 is another candidate key. Let's take that for a relation R you have n attributes out of this you have identified that A1 is a candidate key, A2 is a candidate key and A3 is a candidate key. In our previous example, the vehicle registration number is a one candidate key, engine number is a one candidate key and chassis number is another candidate key. Now among the set of candidate keys, one will be act as a primary key. Primary, using primary key also we can uniquely identify the any tuple in, any tuple in the relation R. Okay, among the set of candidate keys, one will act as a primary key. And the remaining, in this case, if you see that A2 and A3, we will call it as a alternative keys or secondary key. Okay, so I hope you have understood what is a candidate key, what is a super key, what is a primary key, and what is a secondary key. Among the set of candidate keys, one will act as a primary key, and rest of the keys we will call it as a secondary key or alternative key. In the next video, I will discuss, uh, elaborate about the foreign key. Okay. I hope you are understanding all the videos. I request you to go through the videos in a sequence for better understanding. Thank you so much.